My name is Frank Mazzella. I'm the Learning Products Manager for Vision Research. I'm here to present a series of PCC Phantom Camera Control Software Tutorials intended to show you many of the various features and processes incorporated in PCC. In this tutorial, Saving to Flash Memory Part 2, Automatically Saving to Flash, we will walk through the process to automatically save image data stored in the camera's RAM or circular buffer to the different types of supported non-volatile flash memory, including a camera's internal flash memory, attached Phantom Cine Mag, Phantom Cine Flash, or an inserted Type 1 compact flash card. So not to clutter the display area, I'm going to close all open preview and play panels, except for the Miro 320S Camp 2 preview panel. For this part of the tutorial, automatically saving to flash, I'm going to leave the camera settings and cine settings as is for the capture. However, I do need to tell the camera that I want to automatically save the recorded cine to its internal flash, attach phantom cine mag, phantom cine flash, or inserted type 1 compact flash card. Therefore, I need to open the advanced settings selector and scroll down to the start end of recording actions options area. If I were using a camera that had an attached Phantom Cine Mag or built-in flash, I would enable or check the Auto Save to Cine Mag built-in flash feature. However, I'm going to enable the Auto Save to Cine Flash card flash option because this camera incorporates the use of an inserted Phantom Cine Flash module to save its image data to non-volatile memory. For this Cine, I don't want the camera to save the entire Cine to the Phantom Cine Flash. Therefore, I'll need to define the range of images I want to save automatically. Defining this range instructs the camera to essentially set the mark in and mark out points to the specified image numbers, then save them to the Phantom Cine Flash. I'll do this by defining what is essentially the mark in point, the first image to be saved in the first data entry field. For this example, I'm going to enter an arbitrary image number just so I can demonstrate the feature. In a real-world environment, I would have performed a preliminary test shot, so I would know exactly what range of images I need to save. However, for this example, I'm going to enter negative 1000 into the first field. Now I need to define what is essentially the markout point, or the last image to be saved in the last field. For this example, I'm going to enter 1000 into the last field. If I wanted to save the entire camera buffer to non-volatile flash, I'd enable or check the full Cine Enable box. When this is checked, the first and last fields are disabled. The Restart Recording option, when enabled or checked, instructs the camera to immediately return to the capture or recording mode once the Cine is saved to non-volatile flash memory. This can be extremely useful when capturing repetitive takes. Now that I have set the camera to automatically edit and save a captured Cine, I'll click the Capture button to start recording image data into the camera's pre-trigger buffer. Since the camera already has a Cine stored in RAM, a Delete Existing Cine RAM and Proceed to New Recording dialog window appears, asking me to confirm the deletion of the RAM Cine to record a new one. Since I want to record a new Cine, I'll click Yes. Naturally. Clicking No instructs the camera to ignore the capture command. With the pre-trigger buffer full, it's time to trigger the camera. Once the camera has finished recording any post-trigger frames to the camera's RAM or memory buffer, PCC displays a saving to flash status message and a progress indicator in the play panel. The Miro 320S Camp 2 now displays the newly saved Cine, Cine F2, in the camera's group list. It is important to note that files being saved on a Type 1 compact flash card will not be displayed. They can only be seen and read from a compact flash card reader attached to the control computer. As I did with Cine F1, I'll double click on Cine F2 to open it in a play panel. Then I'll open the play tab so I can review the Cine. 
Notice the saved image range is the range of images I specified. Now I'll quickly review the Cine. Now that we no longer need to use this feature, I want to disable it, otherwise the next user would have this feature set without them possibly knowing it. We'll discuss erasing the Cine from the various flash options in the Saving to Flash Part 3 Direct Recording to a Phantom Cinemag video tutorial.